Hello, with Kubuntu 24.04 being just two months away from the release, I want to test the newest daily build ISO, install it in QMU virtual machine and connect to it using the RDP protocol and see if it's good enough for me developing for KD. You search on Google for Kubuntu 24.04 it takes you to the daily build. The build is from today, 24 hours ago. Let's download it. It's almost 4 gigabytes in size. I'll finish, I'll wait for the download to finish, then I'll be back. The ISO file has finished downloading. Let's create the virtual machine. File new virtual machine. Browse Noble Desktop AMD 64 ISO. We we'll select a similar operating system that would be Ubuntu 23.10, 10 gigabytes and 14 vCPUs. Customize, yes, all of the settings are OK, except this one. Vertio, the fastest virtual hard disk. Network interface card Vertio, the fastest. We begin the installation. The virtual hard disk has been created. It booted from ISO CD-ROM. Try or install. This is uh, the live CD session. Let's start the installer. I single click there. It seems that we need double click, so I'll going, I'm going to press the enter key. Okay, let's uh, see the installer. We'll keep the defaults, English, English US, don't download any updates. So this is the normal Kubuntu installer wizard, which is based on Ubuntu's installer wizard, which is Ubiquity. In here was a second radio button where it said uh, slim installation or something where after the install is finished would uninstall and you know, LibreOffice VLC a couple of dip packages this uh, radio button is now hidden that's why there's just one radio button and you can cannot choose any other value Okay, use the entire disk, yes. So it's going to use, does not say what type of um, file table. Is it uh, GPT or uh, partition table or um, MBR? And then it creates 
a uh, partition for UEFI variables ESP and the rest is slash, just one partition. And it's using ext4. Okay, New York. The same name for the computer, Kubuntu 2404, as for the virtual machine. Okay, so the installer ISO contains a file system. The operating system uh, it was installed from the packages, then an image of that file system has been created, compressed, put on an ISO. And now the reverse steps are taking place. This large image that's available in the ISO in the DVD unit is being uh, decompressed and written to the freshly created ext4 partition or the slash root directory. It's not actually installing 2000 dip packages. This looked like it was connected to the Ubuntu official repositories downloading metadata this is um, configuring my computer and then my user linux user account i'll be back once it uh, Okay, it's installing the bootloader grub. grub. Removing some packages that uh, have been installed to slash but are not no longer needed, so dev packages. which will have been used part of the installer, such as, I don't know, Casper and Ubiquity, Udeb, etc. It's almost done. Okay, and now it's done, asks me if I want to restart the computer now. Let's do that. Says that I should remove the ISO. The virtualization software word manager will do this automatically for me. I'm just going to press the enter key. the virtual machine starts there's no media in the dvd drive it starts from the virtual hard disk unfortunately the installer does not install the open ssh server and does not give me the option of installing the open ssh server during the installer which i would do so the very first thing that i do i just connect in order to install the OpenSSH server. The first time that the Linux user is connecting in graphical user interface mode, the KD Plasma 5 session is being prepared for this uh, new user. 
So let's go straight for open SSH server. Not update to get the latest metadata and list of the packages that are available on the Ubuntu official deb repositories. This installs the SSH server, which will allow us to connect to the virtual machine without using the virtualization software's this window, the graphical user interface console. And uh, that would be all. Let's disconnect completely. Log out. And from this moment on, we should not need the virtualization software graphical user interface console any longer. We can get the network interface uh, cards IPv4 address from here. We can connect over SSH. Do I want to connect? Yes. First of all, I'm going to install minimum a list of uh, deb packages such that in emergency case I can do with uh, just uh, the terminal. So that would be start install max minus no x, a text editor for, our, for the command line. MC in Orthodox Twin Pane File Manager for the command line. And oh, Git. And uh, also enough tools such that I can compile software from the command line. So it wants postfix because um, Emacs it has a uh, email client, uh, an email reader built in. And postfix is an email MTA mail transfer agent. General email. Okay, local only. It has downloaded all of the packages and now the packages now it's installing them one by one in the correct order. This has configured the MTA postfix which is not something that I really wanted to install. Okay, so now we have enough if we just restart the computer, we can connect the virtual machine, we can connect to it using OpenSSH. We can do almost anything via command line. We have a file manager. We, we can copy files, create directories. We can edit files using Emacs no X. Next up, I want to connect to the virtual machine also in graphical user interface no, mode, not only in command line mode. For that, I'm going to use the Microsoft Remote Desktop Protocol server, which is called XRDP. XRDP, XORG XRDP. So there's two dev packages, XRDP and XORG XRDP. We're going to install both. the um, system D services for um, XRDP have been created and started automatically. We 
could just create a connect to the virtual machine in graphical user interface mode using an RDP client now if you want. But uh, I'm going to do a reboot anyway. We don't actually need this window anymore. Next up, we are going to connect to the virtual machine using RDP protocol. I have a wiki page about this. So I've installed the RDP server inside the virtual machine. On the host machine, I'm going to connect using the RDP client software, which is called uh, FreeRDP. There's clients for X11, which is called X3RDP, and for Wayland, which is WL3RDP. I'm using X11, so let's use that. The command line looks like this. Let's actually use a different uh, tab in console. We'll use the first tab for connecting via SSH and the second tab to connect to the same virtual machine but using RDP. The IP address ends with 252. The username is correct as many RDP protocol features as possible, so slash video for um, sending video from the virtual machine to the guest machine, to the host machine as fast as possible, such that we can run um, YouTube in a web browser inside the virtual machine. This is the speed of connection over R RDP protocol, which is the fastest local area network. GFX, additional protocol features for improved quality and speed, dynamic resolution such that we can resize the RDP client window, which will automatically resize the KD Plasma 5 desktop resolution. And this forwards sound from the virtual machine to the machine where you run the RDP client. Okay, this fails because, okay, the error was that I was trying with the wrong IPv4 address. It should have been ending with 252 and I wrote 152. Okay, and now it connects correctly. It's really important to make sure that you're not connected using the virtualization software inside of KDE Plasma because then you will fail to connect using the RDP client. There's no handing over as it exists in Windows. If you're connected via the physical keyboard and mouse to your Windows computer, you can connect remotely using RDP protocol and then the local session will be logged out and the RDP session will be created. No, in here you will need to make sure you're logged out from the virtual machine completely and then connect from uh, using an RDP client remote desktop protocol. Okay, so this is the remote desktop protocol RDP client window, free RDP. We can resize the window any way we want. This will tell KD Plasma inside the virtual machine, please resize. And that happens correctly. As you can see, this mega strange resolution 916 times 1052 
with this strange aspect ratio. So this is a very important feature, the fact that we can resize the virtual machine as we want. For instance, we can use the virtual machine and never start the web browser inside the virtual machine. We can just use the web browser from the host machine. Right? Because copy paste works correctly between the virtual machine and the hardware machine, the host machine. Let's actually try it. So this is similar to how you would um, work remotely from uh, a Linux machine to a connecting to a Windows machine using the RTP protocol. We can resize the window as we want. Very important, we can copy paste uh, text from uh, the RTP client to the RTP server and also forwarding sound works and uh, the RTP connection is very snappy. You can use it for software development without any issues. And since you can survive without ever starting the web browser inside the virtual machine, you can actually allocate less random access memory to this virtual machine and just always use the web browser on your host machine. So that would be all. I managed to install Ubuntu 24.04. I managed to connect to it in two ways, using the OpenSSH server at the command line and using the remote desktop protocol in graphical user interface mode. Everything seems very familiar to me. I'm using Kubuntu 23.10. Kubuntu 24.04 seems like a uh, increment. There's some software that I do not use pre-installed, such as LibreOffice and KD Connect and KRDC and the media players Haruna and Elisa. You can easily uninstall those, for instance, by right clicking on the software and go uninstall or manage add ons. This will start the KD App Store application, which is called Discover. Of course, you can uninstall software from the command line using the apt remove command line because it's um, Kubuntu, which is actually using the official Ubuntu dev files from the Linux operating system family named Debian. From here on, I'll set up this virtual machine for um, KDE development. I'm going to install Qt framework from the Qt website because the version of Qt that's available in uh, Ubuntu is older than 6.6.1. That would be apt search cute So cute six is the new prefix for cute six for the Qt 6 modules. We're searching for base, so it says 
Institute 6 uh, base development is version 6.4.2, which is too old for developing for um, the KD community. Here we require at least 6.6.1, which is the newest and latest release of uh, Qt 6. Thank you.